Hello, my name is Mahesh Samtani and I'm the co-author of the article titled Disease Progression Model for CDRSP in MCI and AD subjects from ADNI. The choice of the CDRSB endpoint for disease progression analysis in a patient population close to the onset of dementia was guided by a recent FDA draft guidance on developing drugs for early Alzheimer's disease. The draft guidance supports the concept of enriching clinical trials with patients most likely to progress to more over dementia using both clinical and biomarker-based criteria. Interestingly, for patients with MCI, the draft guidance considers CDRSB as an example of a tool to assess disease progression and as a candidate for a single primary efficacy endpoint that combines assessment of both cognition and function. Disease progression has commonly been described using linear, exponential, and logistic structural models in the AD literature. In this analysis, we formally compared those structural models. The three-parameter logistic model describes an S-shaped disease progression curve and follows a non-linear and saturable trajectory that stays within the boundaries of the scale. This analysis indicated that the three-parameter logistic model best described the CDRSB data. A plot of progression rate versus disease severity suggests that the rate of progression is slower at low and high CDRSB scores with intermediate scores of about 10 exhibiting faster rates of deterioration. This inverted U-shaped relationship is a characteristic of an S-shaped progression curve described by the three-parameter logistic model, which is also highlighted here. The model predicts that the progression rate approaches zero as the scores approach the boundaries of the scale. Within the range of the scale, the progression rate is proportional to the current CDRSB score through a parameter that adjusts each subject's progression rate. An advantage of CDRSB is that less than 2% of the observation reside on the boundaries of the scale for this population, and most of the zero boundary observations were present in subjects that were biomarker negative. Moreover, a comparison of models with different probability distributions suggested that the logit normal distribution captured the behavior of the residual error appropriately. This residual error model has the advantage that the model predictions, even after accounting for residual error, stay within the boundaries of the scale. A mixture model was fitted to baseline biomarker data. Panel A shows the density curves based on the mixture model with the estimated threshold of 0.147 for P-tau to A-beta ratio. The observed densities in panel B show that cognitively normal and AD biomarker distributions are quite distinct with low and high P-tau to A-beta ratios respectively. In contrast, the LMCI subjects represent a mixture, some with AD pathology and some without. The impact of the baseline biomarker data on mean CDRSV progression curves in LMCI and mild AD is shown in panel C and D. Subjects with baseline P-tau to A-beta ratio below the 0.147 threshold exhibit a slow rate of progression versus those subjects above the threshold who show a much faster progression rate. The inclusion of biomarkers led to a huge improvement in model performance. Two additional tests were performed during the biomarker analysis. The first tested the assumption whether the progressors with slower progression rate represented non-progressors. This assumption was found to be true. This suggests that the CSR biomarkers distinguish progressors from non-progressors. Secondly, it was found that residual error for non-progressors was greater than that for progressors. This suggests that studying MCI subjects with pathologic biomarkers has the potential to reduce heterogeneity in prodromal AD trials. Additional covariate analysis indicated that episodic memory as measured by the Wechsler memory scale delayed logical memory too and executive functioning were also associated with progression rate. The results also suggest that episodic memory is more predictive of progression in late MCI than AD, while the reverse appears to be true for executive functioning. As part of the dropout analysis, it was found that completers tend to have lower scores as compared to those that don't complete the study. This was confirmed by the dropout model, which suggested that the likelihood of a subject's data being missing was related to the CDRSV score prior to the event of dropping out. This visual predictive check was part of the model qualification. The top panels represent late MCI subjects, while the bottom panels show mild AD subjects. The graphs on the left are for subjects that are biomarker negative, while the graphs on the right are for subjects that are biomarker positive. The VPCs suggest that the model describes CDRSV progression reasonably well in both AD and late MCI subjects and in biomarker positive and negative subgroups. 
In summary, CSA biomarkers have the ability to discriminate subjects into progressors and non-progressors and represent a tool for enriching MCI clinical trials. This concludes our presentation and we hope that you will find our analysis useful.